Good afternoon, dance family. I am Ray with the Lexington Arts and Murray Dance Studio, and today we are talking about social survival, which is so great. Okay, so social dancing, which will be a thing in the future again, of course, and but just in your dancing in general, there's a couple of things that I want to discuss and demonstrate for you. Okay, so these are going to be skills that will contribute to the ballroom dance skills that you're learning. We've got someone watching, so exciting. Okay, so some skills that are going to contribute to just being a good, well-rounded overall dancer, which is what we're all really after, right? So the main thing I want to talk about um, first is going to be step size. Okay, there's two reasons for this. It applies to a variety of dances. It's just something important to be aware of and be adaptable. Okay. Now this is going to be, you know, maybe more on the leaders, or you could do this as a follower, which I'll talk a little bit, a little bit about as well. Step size is going to help you in your social dancing for two reasons. One, if we are at a crowded dance venue, step step size is going to help for conservation of self. Okay. So for example, in a specific dance. If I am dancing the ladies part of a hustle basic, my personal preference for a crowded dance floor is that my rock step literally goes under my back pocket. I am not going to do a rock step outside of myself. I've had my Achilles tendon stepped on probably two times. It was painful enough that I literally remember it. It was five years ago. Okay. So conservation of self is going to tell me that I'm going to keep my rock step small in a dance that has a back rock. Hustle is an example. But back rocks happen in a lot of our dances. So it's good dance form, but then it's also a way to kind of save yourself, be able to dance longer at the party that you're at or, you know, wedding reception, whatever the case may be. If I can do smaller steps just to protect myself and my partner, something smart to do and be aware of if you've never thought about that before. Okay. The next thing that's going to help my step size is going to help me do is save my energy. So if I'm doing these huge steps and I'm wearing myself out after, you know, like one, two songs, okay, I'm not going to get to enjoy the evening as much as if I can use less effort in my movement, which is going to give me, if I only have so much energy to use, I'm going to be able to spread it out over a longer period of time, which is going to be super important that I'm hoping in 2021, right, we'll get to bring back our Friday night Arthur Murray parties. None of us will have stamina for that, so we've got to start to build it again. So this will be a good skill to use is that I want to take the energy that I have, spread it out longer, put less effort in steps, which is just going to be less movement. So I'll demonstrate that again. So if I'm dancing all my hustles that evening this way, right, instead of, uh, you know, and then we're turning and rotating, I'm going to have more energy to, to dance longer, which is more fun, right? So those are two ways that step size can help you in social dancing. So one is you're less likely to get stepped on or step on someone else super important to be aware of. And then the second is your um, conservation of energy, okay? The other way, I just thought of a third one, the other way that step size can aid our social dancing is tempo. So if I have tempo meaning the speed of the music that we're dancing to. So if I have a song that's pretty quick, and that goes for any dance, it could be waltz, for example. If you're out social dancing and our waltz box is from the man's perspective, leader's perspective, is my forward, side, close, step. And so maybe you're going to be out social dancing somewhere next year that there's not like a ballroom DJ, right? How We're blessed to get to have those at our events, but that's not the case in the real world. And so they put on a waltz that's a little fast. You're not going to like, you know, bust out Viennese waltz at a wedding reception, right? Um, so I just have to make my steps smaller so now I can stay on time to this music that's a faster tempo. So we want to be able to adapt our dances to fit kind of the environment. So if I'm going to use my step size to adapt to the space that I have, the tempo of music that I'm playing, and how many people are on the floor, right? Those are super applicable things when we go out dancing in the real world, okay? And something else that's going to go social survival is uh, arms. What do we do with our arms, okay? Uh, most men, their arm styling is like, I'm gonna stick my hands in my pockets and this is where they belong, okay? So usually, you know, men, you can do things with your arms. It's actually good. It helps balance and matching your partner. Um, that comes a little further down the road though if you're a brand new um, leader ballroom dancer, okay? Um, ladies, for some of you that are watching, you've been dancing a while with us, okay? What we're gonna do with our arms now, if I'm gonna do, let me back up so you can see this, if I'm doing crossovers, I'll do one towards you, I'm a lady in cha-cha, and I do this number, yeah, for my solo routine at Showcase, that's awesome. 
maybe not something I want to do at a wedding reception. I might look a little pretentious, actually, okay? Um, but so if I can, I can make my styling and how I'm dancing the dances I've been working on fit the environment that I'm in, which is going to help you kind of fit in as a social dancer, too. So if I'm, I may do something low or I may do something, you know, just kind of small, I can put my hand out and back in. I also don't want to be the person that's like taking people out on the dance floor, right? You want people to ask you to dance, not trying to avoid you, okay? So these are things just to be aware of that a lot of times don't get, don't get talked about, but they go together in this uh, kind of patchwork quilt we're trying to help our students decide design of being good well-rounded social dancers so so far for those of you that have just joined we have gone over step size helps you have more energy to dance longer conservation of yourself and your partner making sure you don't get stepped on and adjusting the tempo of the music so I'm, I don't really want to make myself move faster if the music's faster I'm just going to make the distance I'm traveling smaller that applies to any dance at all which then in turn also helps if you're doing smaller steps you don't get tired as fast you can dance longer and have more fun important to note okay and then we were just talking about arm styling yes so I want my how I'm using my arms or my styling or how much kind of like um, punch I'm putting into actions that I'm doing if I'm going like BAM yeah that's something I'm gonna be doing at a showcase like a solo routine that I've worked on not at a wedding reception with you know 50 people on the dance floor that's a postage stamp big as most wedding receptions are okay which brings me to a third point so if you are out at say you're on a cruise ship okay they've got a dance floor that's maybe 50 square feet I don't know if that's just an estimate if it's a smaller club or something um, and then a song comes on you know it's a foxtrot and you're like man I really want to go around the room I have bad news for you no one else knows that Foxtrot goes around the room unless they take ballroom dance lessons. So the way that you can adapt and be able to use the skills that you have, okay, super, super simple, but great sign of a good ballroom dancer is, like I said, adapting to your space, adapting to the setting, adapting to how many people are on the floor. So Foxtrot can turn into something that stays in place, okay? So if you know your bronze tube, right? If I'm in the, in the ballroom here at the studio and I'm going along, and I'm gonna do a junior walk. So I rotate, now I go back on my left foot, I go back and I rotate again as I'm out of the camera, okay? Now I can take that and two things I can do with Foxtrot. I can use this junior walk idea and just have my basic and then I go backwards as a leader. So I'm not taking up very much space right here, right? I can do my rock step. I can do another rock step, right? Maybe promenade. Doing small steps, rock again. And I just did a fox trot in like a six square foot spot on the floor instead of like I have to do laps around a 5,000 square foot ballroom, right? And it's just that it's adaptable, that you're able to do that as a leader and, and as a follower. And as a follower, what's kind of fun is you can make suggestions for your partner through the tone in our arms. If I'm following this fox trot, and I know there's someone behind me, or if um, he's getting ready to go backwards as my leader, and I know that there's someone there, I as a follower can put more pressure on my partner's back, be like, hey, don't go backwards without actually saying it. So then um, the other thing that I can do is, lost my train of thought. So I've got my um, basic now for Foxtrot. I can adapt, okay? I can do the same thing in waltz. So if I'm out somewhere, a waltz comes on, I'm probably gonna stick to my box, okay? I can do your underarm turn, right? And I'm enjoying the music, talking with my partner, and we don't have to travel because I'm adapting to the space that I'm in, okay? So there's a two ways we can take, um, like Foxtrot and Waltz would be dances that you would experience out in a social setting too, but being able to adapt those that they don't, they don't have to travel, okay? You don't have to be like, this is the way it has to be. So that we're talking about in a social setting being adaptable to where we're at and that you can still use the dance skills that you have. Nobody's there judging you like, mm, you didn't take that fox trot all the way around the room. And that's okay, so you can keep it in place, still enjoy your dancing and your dance moves, and also still look like a good dancer. Like just because I'm out social dancing, it doesn't mean that I, I like, I'm allowed to have bad posture and then like take you know really tiny steps. Like if you know you're at a point in your dancing that, okay, your teachers worked with heel leads with you, so you can have like a good frame and take up not very much space and still use the techniques that we've been working on. It just can adapt where then we're in a smaller, a smaller dance space and that is completely okay. 
So in review, just so I can keep up with myself, okay, so we've talked about your step size, three things that accomplishes. One is conservation of self. You don't get stepped on, protects your partner and those around you. Two is the tempo of the music. Smaller steps can help you adapt to a faster tempo. And likewise, on the flip side, bigger steps can help you adapt to a, fat, to a slower tempo. So now if a waltz comes on that's like really way too slow, but I know it's in three, four time and then it's a waltz, I can take more time to do the box even though it's maybe something I wouldn't dance to, like, you know, it's not competition tempo, right? It's too slow, but bigger steps will help me stay on time. Instead of like doing smaller ones and having to wait in between. So if I had step, side, close, bigger steps, step, side, close, step, side, Close. The second option looks better, right? I was stretching the time that I had, made the motion, fill it up. So your tempo is going to dictate how big or small your steps are, okay? Slow tempos, bigger steps, fast tempos, smaller steps, right? The third thing that step size can help you do is save energy and be able to dance longer. So one of my favorite examples is cha-cha, for example, if I'm dancing the leader's part of a cha-cha basic, okay? So one, if I don't have very much space, there's no reason that my cha-cha basic should be this way, okay? I really can't do that and do good body action anyway. But if I have cha-cha-cha, rock, step, cha-cha-cha, I'm not taking up very much space, good for a social setting, and then I'm gonna save energy, I'll make it through the whole song. Yeah, or subsequent songs, right? If my goal is to be able to dance at the entire party or wedding reception or whatever the case may be. Another topic we've covered is arms. What do I do with my arms? Well, it's appropriate, pick what's appropriate for the setting. If you're doing a solo routine, or if you're competing, or if you're you know, at metal ball working on your freestyles, I, I would think that's like maybe a medium, medium setting for arms. Routines would be like big arms if it fits the dance, okay? Um, freestyles at metal ball, maybe medium, medium size arms, be aware of them. You don't wanna take out other, other students on the floor, okay? Versus like a social setting, where then there's a lot of people, it's gonna be very small, limited arms. They can still help you and help the action that you're doing, but you don't wanna be taking people out with them. Okay, something to be aware of. Then the other thing we were talking about is for leaders to make the decision if the dance is technically a traveling dance. I don't have to make it travel just to say that I fit the mold of what the dance is. So I can dance to a waltz or a foxtrot song and keep it pretty compact. And then I'm using the space that, that I'm allowed, right? Um, one example that I'm thinking of is dancing with the Lexington Stars, right? Usually when we do that event, there is a, a band that plays and there's a decent, a decent sized dance floor, but you have a mix of people that know how to dance and a mix of people and people that also don't. So then they don't understand that Walter Foxtrot is supposed to travel. I don't want to be running them over. So then I make the decision as a leader, like we can have fun with this and I can just stay in one spot and kind of protect my real estate here on the dance floor. Okay, then that kind of segued us into that as a follower, I can make suggestions to my partner so that we don't run into other people on the floor. So ladies, it is not just your job to like tune out and just Kind of just be along for the ride the whole time if you if you if you're working with a leader who does know how to do backwards motion from their perspective in dances that travel or even in the ones that don't if they're going to do a back step in a box and rumba don't let them step on somebody right so you can either say watch out or you know tension on their arm or kind of pull back on their shoulder so then they don't move in that direction gentlemen you can do the same thing you don't have to run us into other people on the floor not that you do that on purpose but it's a lot to try to lead a step and then plan for traffic too. But with um, pressure on the lady's back, I'll do it this way, right? So if I was gonna go to do a step and I change my mind, I can check my own body weight, but I've kind of already sent her. So I can just do a little, a little pull, just a little tension so that she doesn't actually continue moving backwards and step on someone or get stepped on. Um, so it's a very nice and caring thing to do for your dance partner. Okay, so I hope you guys have enjoyed my kind of run through of social survival, not anything dance specific, but just some skills to be either aware that you need to learn, maybe things you've never even thought about before. Take it back, ask your teacher, practice it. Uh, feel free to comment. I'll, I can check those out. would love feedback on today's class and hopefully we will see you all soon. Have a wonderful day.